Calor el ode i drefn ar eitem gyntar na gen dynir wythnos yma yw cwestiynau'r prif wynidog a'r cwestiwn cyntaf Nick Ramsey. A diolch llawydd. Will the First Minister make a statement on the provision of dementia services in South East Wales? Yes, and Iron Bevan University Health Board have recently completed a consultation on the development of three centres of excellence for dementia care in their area, and they're working with the Regional Partnership Board to implement a new dementia action plan. Uh, thank you, First Minister. The decision of an Iron Bevan Local Health Board to close the St Pierre Dementia Ward at Chepstow Community Hospital has been roundly criticised by dementia sufferers and their families alike in my constituency. It now appears that the decision could face a legal challenge from Monmouthshire County Council, as it seems there is a strong case for a judicial review, and such action will clearly be detrimental, to say the least to the relationship between the local authority and the health board. What discussions has your government had with the local health board about their decision? And will you press the board to look at reversing this decision, even at this late hour? Well, it is for the health board to plan and design services that meet uh, population needs. Now, of course, as the member has said, there are public concerns due to the closure of the ward at Chepstow. I understand the CHC have expressed overall support in relation to the community-based model. We know that community-based services assist people to have access to appropriate and timely services as close to their home as possible. Uh, the Board have agreed a further £200,000 recurring revenue to continue to develop community-based services in Manmusha in recognition of the impact of this service change. Now, as far as we as a government are concerned, of course, our dementia plan looks to strengthen services within the community to enable admissions to hospital for dementia, either to be avoided or result in a shorter stay. Question Dai, Heaven David. Will the First Minister make a statement on Welsh Government support for small and medium sized house builders? Uh, well, there are many products to support the sector, for example, through the Development Bank, the Wales Property Development Fund provides small and medium sized home builders with affordable housing opportunities, and our House Builders Engagement Programme also works with small companies to develop targeted support. My, my concern is that the house building industry is dominated. Um, by a very small number of very large firms, which effectively creates a cartel, um, keeps, keeps prices artificially high, and, and prevents the mass building of affordable homes that are needed, because it's not in the interest to meet demand in the long term, because that will cause prices to, to fall. Um, the answer, I think, is an expanded housing market in which small, locally-based businesses who are sensitive to the needs of their communities are able to thrive and grow, and I intend to hold um, a cross-party group later this year to explore how we can do more of that. But I'd like to know um, what more can the Welsh Government do to develop that ambition and to grow that small business house-building base? Well, could I point to two things in particular? I mentioned there the house-building engagement programme. Now, we are working with private developers, including SMEs, to understand and, of course, to tackle the barriers that they face to building more housing. That relationship is reflected in the recent announcement to quadruple the Wales Property Development Fund to £40 million. That will be recycled over the 15-year life of the current scheme to an estimated investment of £270 million. But we also specifically want to support local builders to build the homes people need through a new partnership between Valleys Councils and the Development Bank for Wales that will build on the fund. Uh, and just to give one example, there is an initiative in RCT to make small parcels of public land available and therefore, of course, more attractive and accessible to SME developers. Mohamed Ashka. Presiding officer. First Minister, according to the Home Builders Federation, the West Government could support small and medium sized house builders by forcing local authorities to speed up progress on delivering their development plans and five years' land supplies. The Joint Housing Land Availability Study revealed that only six local authorities had a five-year supply of readily developable housing land in spite of this being a key planning policy requirement by the Vash government. First Minister, what action will you take to ensure that the local planning authority meet your government's requirement and increase the availability of deliverable housing sites in Wales, please? Well, it's a matter for local planning authorities to have in place a development plan and to meet the requirements in terms of housing supply. The problem is, of course, if there's no development plan in place, then, of course, there is no guidance in effect. Uh, the problem then becomes something resembling a free-for-all. That's in nobody's interest. Two things, however, are important. First of all, it is absolutely crucial that local authorities work together. 
Um, artificial political boundaries are just not recognised by the housing market. If we look, for example, at the south east of Wales, we can't parcel up uh, planning purely on the basis of local planning authority boundaries. So uh, working together will be hugely important. But also, of course, coming back to the point I made before, it's one thing to have a supply of land for the future. It's another thing to ensure that that land is available in parcels that are attractive enough for SMEs to be able to compete. Bethan Syed. Um, just an a par hai gyda thema ama. Um but the nature gwod os but the more i roi favreth a uh, possib i tai cumnia si than cal tai eco to incredi bod in rubeth si dang in cali edric arno or an um canal do yeah the varchnad ako edric you need in tai and voy canal do Canaladui, um, Os more the Hiedrich, Melni Hun, Velswadjeth, and Munsikrai, but the Kinsinia or Vath and Kal Ru Vath of Lenorias. To the all, Vel Rayol, of course, and a Gorfenol, Mohunica de Lia de Gida, Riolade, um, Adeladi, Anglina Savonets, in Kali, Iva Busiadi, Anglina, Atai, and a Ford Punna. My system continue on Delia Gida, a Ford Matir and Kali de Nidio, and Nid Basin Digwith. Ar y tîr yng Nglyn Asafonau Adeladu, ym wrth mytai yn cael ei adeladu. Ond, wrth gweud hynny, ym gyrfwn yn syniad uh, sydd yn werth uh, ystyried, uh, a falle strategaeth sgrifennu uh, nôl i'r aelod gyda mwy o fanylion na fydd yma. Sy'n yn awr gan arweinwyr y pleidi arweinydd grŵp Bywcip, Neil Hamilton. Och yn falle. Um, the First Minister is no doubt uh, familiar with the aphorism that all political lives end in failure unless cut off at midstream at a happy juncture. Is the uh, First Minister's political career still in midstream, and is this a happy juncture? Well, I, I think the leader of UKIP is, is a, an example of uh, life after death in politics. <laughs> in many um, although I'm not sure what kind of political life it is, uh, it is uh, for him. Uh, no, I mean, from my perspective, I've outlined a timetable. I think it's important the country has continuity, and it's important, of course, that uh, everything is in place to prepare for my successor, whoever that might be. Well, we shall miss him when he's gone, uh, and I want to move on now. To, uh, I don't know what uh, the, the First Minister's uh, long-term objectives are and whether he plans to uh, stand for the Assembly in the next uh, Assembly elections, and therefore the extent to which he retains an interest in whether we expand the size of this institution or not. Uh, the Assembly Commission has embarked upon a consultation exercise, the results of which have not yet been made public, but nobody has actually gauged the feeling amongst the public in general, as far as I'm aware. So the opinion poll, which has been carried out by uh, Opinion Research, a respected market research company, and we, we asked uh, the public, do you support an increase in Assembly members at the National Assembly for Wales from 60 to either 80 or 90? Only 32 per cent of respondents were in favour of an increase, 42 per cent and 26 per cent don't know. Does the First Minister think it right that we should proceed with this exercise without carrying the public with us? Well, we shall see uh, what happens at the next election in terms of whether UKIP are correct in their analysis of public opinion. Uh, if he wishes to know my plans post-2021, he is welcome to look to join the Labour Party and attend the General Management Committee of the next Gen Constituency ah. Labour Party, and I'm sure he will be enlightened as a result of that. Can I say it's hugely important this debate is a sensible one and not one driven by what is seen as political expediency. I have been in this assembly since 1999. I, I confess I only spent just over a year on the back benches, uh, but I do know that there is immense uh, pressure and strain on back benches of all parties because we have moved on from being what was in effect a, a, a kind of administrative body. I mean, I remember standing here and introducing the, on the old building, introducing the potatoes originating in Egypt order and the undersized whiting order, and we used to debate them. The level of scrutiny was nothing like as deep as it uh, necessarily is now, and that has to be reflected not just in the working practices of members, but in the numbers of members, because we have proceeded far beyond uh, where we were in 1999, and a sensible debate has to be had as to what the correct number of AMs is. I notice that Northern Ireland, with a population just of a half that of Wales, has 109. Uh, Scotland has 129. Uh, we, we must look sensibly and carefully at what the right number is for the Assembly. Well, I hear what the First uh, Minister says, that uh, we're all overworked, but I'm not sure that that's going to strike much of a chord with the general public. Before the Assembly was set up, of course, there was a referendum, and before the Assembly's powers were increased, in, uh, there was a referendum in 2011. Why should we not have a referendum on whether to expand the size of the Assembly on this occasion? 
Well, the member is talking about fundamental constitutional changes. I don't believe this is one. I think it's perfectly uh, possible for parties to examine this and take their case to the people of, of Wales uh, through an election, if that's what it uh, takes. Uh, but certainly, uh, you know, we must be careful about this. I mean, it's never going to be popular to say to people, let's have more politicians. You know, let's all accept that. But I think we have to counter that by saying to people, we have to have the right number of people to do, do the job properly. It's in nobody's interest uh, to have uh, Assembly members in a position where, where they may not be able in the future to scrutinise in the way that they would want to, and that is a situation that we need to uh, avoid by looking at the numbers that uh, will be in this body in years to come. Gwyneth Plague Cymru, Leanne Wood. Dear Llywydd, before my questions, I'd like to acknowledge the announcement made by the First Minister uh, on the weekend. First Minister, you have held this role for a long time and you've had a lengthy term in government uh, prior to becoming First uh, Minister. And I know that you and I have had our political differences and I'm sure that we will continue to have those differences, but I genuinely wish you all the best and your family uh, for the future. Now, we still have time to hold you to account and I'm sure no one would expect us to let up on that. So with that in mind, can you please tell us how many people in Wales are in employment on a zero hours contract? Has it increased or decreased since 2016? It's very difficult to give an answer to that question because, of course, the private sector is not something that comes under our control. What we have done, however, of course, is to effectively outlawed zero hours contracts in the, uh, the public sector. We want to make sure, for example, in the care sector. The care sector is a foundation sector uh, as far as we are concerned, and we will use our powers to the utmost. We'll push the boundaries of our powers to make sure that zero hours contracts are not there uh, as far as the public sector are concerned. There is a job to be done yet in terms of ensuring that, that public sector bodies ensure there are no zero hours contracts in place when they subcontract, and that is an area which, which still needs some work. Well, perhaps I can help you, uh, First Minister. Proportionately, more people in Wales are now employed on zero-hour contracts than any other UK nation. And if I can put it another way, it's under a Labour government. More people per head of the population are in unstable zero-hours work than in any other country in the UK. Could the First Minister point the 43,000 people in Wales on zero-hours contracts where in his government's economic action plan is a strategy to stop this abhorrent employment practice? Two things. Firstly, it will be in the economic contract. Uh, there will be a very heavy focus on fair employment. Secondly, as I announced on Saturday, there will be a Fair Work Commission established. The job of that commission will be to look at all levers, some legislative potentially, some not, in order to make sure that as far as we can go in terms of the powers that we have, that we truly make Wales a fair work nation. Of course, some people want the flexibility of this kind of uh, employment, but most people don't. And for that matter, Labour has supposedly uh, committed to end their use. Now, with this in mind, in mind I'd like to point you to the uh, page 45 of Labour's 2017 election manifesto. Alongside boasting about the Welsh Government's clearly false record in ending the use of zero-hours contracts, it contains a commitment to legislate against them. We know from the NHS pay cap fiasco that this Government has a habit of disowning its own manifesto. So how about the programme for Government? And I'll quote from page 13 of your programme for government, which says we will seek to uh, limit the use of zero-hours contracts. So let me put a simple question to you, First Minister. Did you mislead people, or was it incompetence that has led Wales to becoming the zero-hours contracts capital of the UK? Well, when it comes to the public sector, we have delivered. We've ensured that there are far fewer zero-hours contracts. Uh, we want to drive them down as far as possible With as well in terms of subcontractors as well. But the second point is this. She is right. She is right to point to the 2017 general election manifesto. Uh, of course, that would have used powers that are not available to us as a devolved institution or a government in order to move forward in creating a fair work nation across the whole of the UK. Unfortunately, we did not see a Labour government elected at that time, but I have absolutely no doubt that at the next general election we will have a Labour Prime Minister. Yeah. Yeah.
Are we near the road flight, Andrew R. T. Davis? Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, could I join in the sentiments that the leader of Plaid Cymru said in acknowledging the statement you made to the Labour Party conference, First Minister? There will be a time to pay uh, tribute in this chamber to your time in public life and service years, First Minister and Minister. Uh, but without doubt, uh, obviously, there will now form an election uh, in the Labour Party to find a successor to your good self. But in that time uh, that you remain First Minister, I wish you all the very best. Uh, and ultimately, I do hope that you are able to keep the wheels of government moving forward because, as I've said many times in this place, uh, I might disagree politically with you and the members on that front bench, but three million people depend on the decisions that you make in a whole raft of public services, um, and ultimately those public services are, are obviously the crown jewel of what we require here in Wales. Uh, with that in mind, First Minister, I'd like to ask you about the economic action plan that was brought forward by the Welsh Government uh, in December. And one of the key planks, surely, of any economic action plan is to increase take home pay here in Wales. Uh, regrettably, we know that we have the lowest take-home pay of any part of the United Kingdom. £498 uh, is the average take-home pay here in Wales against the UK average of £550. Uh, we know for a fact that since the start of devolution, a Welsh pay packet is £49 behind a Scottish pay packet, which at the start of devolution was exactly the same uh, for a Welsh worker and a Scottish worker. Why, with 17,500 words in the Economic Action Plan, are wages only mentioned twice if it isn't a priority for your government to make sure we close that gap to invigorate economically our communities in Wales? Well, well first of all, I do have to point out, of course, that the uh, reduction or removal of in-work benefits has not helped in terms of people's take-home pay uh, in Wales. I mean, we've seen the effect that has had. We are no longer, unfortunately, as a result of the actions of the UK government, in a position where we can say to people, if you get a job, you'll be better off. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is uh, surely uh, a disincentive for people to gain employment. He asked what we will do. Well, there are two issues here. First of all, fair work, making sure that people get a fair day's pay for a fair day's work, and that's what the Fair Work Commission will be charged to do. And secondly, productivity. Productivity undoubtedly leads to a driving up of people's wages. Now, this is a UK problem. It is a problem that, that I, I know is more acute in Wales. I accept that. But it is uh, an issue that uh, we should all strive to, uh, to overcome. Why is it, for example, that a German worker gets far more out of the same machine than a worker in the UK would? Well, part of it is training. Uh, a heavy emphasis on training, whether it's in-work training through employers. Jobs Growth Wales is an example of that. Uh, also, of course, uh, working closely with our FE colleges to make sure people have the skills they need to increase their personal incomes. And that is the way to me to look to drive up uh, GVA per head. As I said, regrettably, over the 20 years, we've seen that massive gap open up between a Scottish worker and a Welsh worker, and obviously, sadly, Wales stay at the bottom of the league table when it comes to wages. I have to say, in the answer you gave me, it doesn't give me much confidence uh, that there is going to be that big change by certainly the early 2020s, if not the mid-2020s, uh, and that money coming into communities of length and breadth of Wales, surely, what you'd accept, would reinvigorate those communities. And one key plank of economic activity is house building, and we've heard already from the member for Caerphilly uh, the importance of house building. Last year, there was a 10% reduction in house building in Wales. Now, if you have low wages, then you've got low demand for houses because obviously it's, difficulty, it's difficult to make the economic case for house builders to invest in areas. Uh, so surely you can see the link. Why isn't the economic action plan more prescriptive in the help that the Welsh Government will give to assist house building in Wales? Because as I said, last year alone, we saw a 10% decrease in house building here in Wales? Well, the latest statistics show that we continue, I'd argue, to have a positive trend in the number of homes completed in Wales, with October to December 2017 data showing an increase of 29% on the previous quarter. During the 12 months to the end of December 2017, a total of 6,885 new dwellings were completed. That's up by 4% on the 12 months to December 2016. What are we doing as a government? Well, first of all, of course, uh, ensuring... David Melding is very lively today, I must say. Uh, we are working with our partners, of course, to deliver against our key commitment of providing 20,000 affordable homes. And on top of that, of course, we have helped to buy Wales. We know that that's firmly established. It's a £290 million investment in the second phase. That will support the construction of over 6,000 new homes by 2021, helping first-time buyers get onto the property ladder and, of course, the changes to land transaction tax. They will help to stimulate the market, particularly for those who are most in need, who have the lowest incomes. And we see from the figures that I've given already, the positive effect of what we're doing. 
I wish I could join you in being positive about those figures, uh, First Minister. As David Melton pointed out, we need 12,000 houses per year to meet the demand. As I pointed out, the figures, not my figures, the industry figures, show a 10% decline in house building last year. I've indicated about wage restraint here in Wales. After 20 years of labour in government, we are the lowest paid nation of the United Kingdom compared to other parts of the UK. That is a deplorable record. One of the things that you have championed in your time as First Minister is obviously the new M4 relief road, as you believe that will create great economic <coughs> potential, not just for the south-east of Wales, but across the whole of the South Wales corridor. Can you confidently say that with the intention you announced on Saturday, the M4 relief road will proceed on the basis of the support the government has given to date, namely continuation of the support of the Black Route, as you have indicated that that has been a personal goal for you to deliver, and now we know that there will be a new First Minister, can you say that that will remain a Welsh Government priority? Well, I think I've expressed a strong preference for either route, and no can I, because I'll be the decision maker who takes the final decision. But there is no, there is no doubt there's a problem. We can all see what the, uh, the issue is at the, uh, at, at, in the uh, tunnels at, uh, at Bring Glass, and that problem will not be, uh, is not easy to resolve, and I will consider uh, the evidence of the planning in, uh, inspector when I get that evidence. But it's not just about roads. It's also about the metro, making sure the public transport is fit for purpose. We know that Cardiff Central Station has 11 million people going through it every year. That number is bound to increase. There is no road solution for people coming in from the north into Cardiff. Uh, there's nothing, you know, we can't expand North Road. Uh, the A470 will always have a, a choke point as people come into uh, to Cardiff. And the answer to that uh, is, is multifaceted to me. It means making sure there are more frequent services on the, uh, the existing railway lines, better services, affordable services, new lines being opened up, particularly through uh, light rail, and also, of course, the promotion of active travel. I, I know my colleague, um, the Air of Knetti, is, is going to point that out, and he's quite right to do so, because Cardiff has great potential uh, for ensuring that more people use bikes and walking in order to get to work. So, yes, roads are important, we know that, but also so are the trains, both light and heavy rail, and, of course, uh, what has traditionally been seen as, as recreation by some, but really is a form of transport, and that's uh, cycling. Question three, Mark Reckless. Will the First Minister make a statement on public ownership of retail and commercial property? Well, the guiding principles for Welsh Government ownership of property are set out in our corporate asset management strategy, and other public bodies will have their own relevant asset strategies. But, of course, uh, since bringing uh, Cardiff Airport back into Government ownership, it's been a remarkable success, and I look forward to the first uh, Qatar Airways flight coming in next week. Certainly look forward to those Qatar flights uh, starting. First Minister, on 11th of April, Ken State said that there had been no transaction connected with a proposed Cardiff bus station that would create a liability for SDLT or land transaction tax. Yet on the 18th of April, he said Welsh Government had recently bought the site from Cardiff Council for £12 million. Did Welsh Government agree, exchange and complete on such a large and complex deal in less than a week? Or has it somehow sought to avoid its own 6% super tax on land transactions? No, we did not gain a tax advantage as a result of this transaction being completed under SDLT rather than LTT, so I can assure the, uh, the member of that. Jenny Rathbone. Um, on, on this same subject, which obviously is of great interest to me, um, could you explain why it's been necessary for the Welsh Government to intervene with this um, proposed Metro Delivery Partnership, given that a huge number of commercial companies have benefited from relocating to Central Square, and I would have expected them to make the um, planning gain uh, necessary to build the bus station, which is a crucial part of making this a success. Well, it, it's been necessary for us to uh, become involved because we want to make sure the Metro is uh, successful. We have a vision for the site around Cardiff Central to become an integrated transport hub to provide seamless integration between trains, buses, coaches and uh, the metro, allowing easy access for pedestrians and storage facilities uh, for cyclists and, of course, facilities for taxis and private cars. Because we know that an integrated transport hub is by far the most effective way of ensuring that people will actually use the system in the first place. So I think it is appropriate for government to become involved in developing uh, the heart of our capital uh, city for the benefit uh, of not just the people of Cardiff, but of course people who live beyond and work in the city every day. Question, Pedwar, Jane Bryant. What progress is the Welsh Government making in combating loneliness and social isolation? 
Well, we'll deliver on our commitment to produce a strategy by March 2019, uh, building on the work of the Health, Social Care and Sport, uh, Sport Committee, rather, inquiry into loneliness and isolation. We are engaging widely with stakeholders, including the Scottish and UK governments, to help us to set the direction uh, that will drive our work. Thank you, First Minister. Loneliness and isolation can affect anyone at any time in our lives. It's a significant public health issue, and we know it can be as damaging as smoking 15 cigarettes a day. I hosted a roundtable discussion in, uh, with Age Cymru in my constituency last month about tackling loneliness. And one good example um, is the work of Friend in Me in an Iron Bevan University Health Board. They're working to pair up care homes and schools, and the benefits there are clear for everyone to see. What role can Welsh Government play in supporting initiatives like this, which bring all generations together and tackle loneliness and isolation across Wales? Well, Friendly Me is an excellent uh, project. Of course, it's been developed by an Iron Bevan uh, board. We know that where people are lonely, it's not just a question of them not having company and the sense of isolation, but it affects people's health. Uh, and that's why, obviously, as a health board, it's rightly uh, correct to actually get involved in making sure that, that loneliness as is an issue is, uh, is dealt with. Uh, I can say to the member that on the 23rd of April, we commissioned research uh, looking at the basic principles of sustainable community-based volunteering approaches to tackling loneliness and social isolation amongst older people. It is not perhaps the snappiest title ever invented by government, but nevertheless it does explain what it's going to do. Uh, and that is there, of course, to enable us to find out what the most effective ways of tackling loneliness actually are, to make sure that what, uh, what is developed in uh, months and years to come is as effective as it can be. Angela Burns. Uh, Friendly Me is a, indeed an excellent innovation, First Minister, and in fact next uh, month you will be paying tribute to and recognising the work of Mary Adams, who is a constituent of mine in West Wales, for the work that she undertakes through the rotary-backed Rotakids project, project. Rotakids spends time with people with dementia, with people suffering from loneliness, and who feel very, very isolated in order to bring some of that relief into some of the hours of their days. These projects are absolutely vital. And yet, in that very important Health and Social Care Committee report, the government only partially accepted one of the recommendations. Um, <clears throat> that was the recommendation to ask for three-year funding for projects such as this in order to ensure that they have a chance to embed in the local community and become self-sustaining. Will you work with your secretaries of uh, health, social care and finance uh, whilst you're doing this review in order to ensure that we look at this because all these projects are worth nothing if they evaporate after a year and in fact they leave behind a really sad wake of people who once had something who can no longer access a very vital service. It is a challenging government to seek to provide uh, three-year revenue funding when our own budget often uh, is mm -hmm. uh, necessarily because the block grant that we get uh, has to be developed on a shorter timescale. Uh, that is there's an issue that's always been with us. It's not a political point I make, but that, that nevertheless is, is true. But yes, uh, as far as possible, we try to ensure that we don't simply uh, see revenue funding for organisations disappear after a, a particular period of time. Uh, where that does happen, it has. We look to work with them to make, or we, we encourage them to work with us to look at sustainable funding solutions uh, elsewhere. Uh, and I know there are some organisations like Men's Sheds. I've visited one in her constituency, in fact, in, in Pembroke Dock. Uh, which uh, have been very successful in terms of combating loneliness amongst, uh, amongst men who have lost their partners. Dai Lloyd. Uh, well, yeah, the uh, point uh, sylfaenol yn deillio on, uh, on hadroddiad neu fel uh, pwyllgor iechyd. Ac yn bellach i'r esiamplad yn unig glywad sydd hefyd, wrth gwrs, yn mynd i fod yn fregus o ran ariannu tymor hir. Ydych chi'n credu y dylech chi fel llywodraeth bod yn rhoi fwy o y glirder a fwy o flonoriaeth i'r pwynt sylfaenol yma. Nid yn unig clodfori y gwasanaeth, ond hefyd deud rhywbeth ynglyn â'r sicrwydd tymor hir ar iannol. Ie, yeah, fyddai'n problem yn dyfeth. Uh, mewn sefyll bydd lle mae'r uh, mae'r mae maint o arian yn cwmpo bob blwyddyn, mae fe'n anodd i rhoi uh, uh, unrhyw fath o ddewid ynglyn yn y ffordd hwnna, achos y ffaith uh, dwi ddim yn glir, a faint o'r bydd ar gael i'r llywodraeth. Lle ni'n gallu wneud hwnna, ni'n uh, ni ceisio wneud hwnna, uh, ond i fod honest, mae fe'n anodd i rhoi uh, a ddewid yn y ffordd hwnna i, i, i bopeth, o achos y ffaith ni'n gwybod bod, bod uh, y gallu ddim yn cwmpo o flwyddyn i flwyddyn. Cwestiwn pump, beth an saen? about workplace culture uh, in Welsh Government? 
Yes, the Permanent Secretary is responsible for the leadership and management of the Welsh Government Civil Service, and I support her in leading a culture that is confident, inclusive and focused on delivering for Wales. Uh, First Minister, I think it is important uh, to note uh, your absence from the debate on the leak inquiry last week. Uh, despite retreating from the legal challenge to block the debate, I would have thought uh, that you would have respected the institution of this Assembly and would have been here to hear uh, the arguments that AM a has put forward. Now, we know that you have been cleared uh, in the Hamilton report that was released late on a Tuesday evening following plenary, uh, but I think the public need to know why no protection was offered or given uh, to witnesses, unlike with the leak inquiry. Have you seen, for example, BBC reports that people were afraid to give evidence uh, because they were worried about the repercussions. Your former colleague, and I think very much former now, Leighton Andrews, notes in his commentary on the matter that there was, and I quote, a toxic atmosphere on the fifth floor that Mr Sargent and certain other ministers were subject to persistent personal undermining. Now, I agree and I see what has been said with regards to the Hamilton report, but do you not agree that cultural changes uh, need to take place uh, within government, and will you prepare uh, to take on those changes before you leave office? Well, the Hamilton report is clear. I don't intend to uh, elaborate on what uh, it uh, says, other than to say that, of course, as far as staff are concerned, Welsh Government staff, there is a matter for the, uh, the Permanent Secretary. And I can say, according to our latest staff survey, 80% of staff score the organisation positively on inclusion and fair treatment. That's 4% above the UK Civil Service benchmark. 88% of Welsh Government staff say they are treated with respect by those they work with, 3% above the UK Civil Service uh, benchmark. Now, of course, that does show that there's more work to be done, and I know the Permanent Secretary is very much aware of that. Paul Davis. Joshua, uh, First Minister, it is important to nurture an, an appropriate culture and the right culture within Welsh Government and to ensure that work is carried out in a timely manner and that people working within the government correspond in a timely fashion. Following on from the question that the member for Carmarthen West and South Pembrokeshire asked you last week, I can confirm that I am also waiting for a response to my subject access request submitted to the government on the 15th of March regarding information asked about me by the Welsh Government to the Hiwalda University Health Board. Given the importance of nurturing a culture of accountability and respect within the Welsh Government, it's crucial that matters like this are dealt with openly and professionally. Therefore, can you give me an indication when I will receive a response to my subject access request? I entirely agree that we should be open and professional, and that's what we strive to do. Uh, it's not something I've been directly involved with, as he can uh, appreciate, uh, but I do hope that the position will be reached soon uh, when the question can be answered. And answered it must be, I understand that. Question Awn aeth y prifuniddog ddatganiad am fwriad Llywodraeth Cymru i ehangu gwasanaeth bysia traws Cymru ymhellach. Wn i'n dal i weithio'n agos gydag yr dyddorau lleol i ymchwilio i gyfleoedd i wella'r gwasanaethau traws Cymru sy'n cael eu cynnig yn barod. Mae hefyd newyddus i gyflwyno lwybre newydd lle mae'n manteision strategol amlwg i gynnig gwasanaethau bysiau a chwytsys pellter hir newydd. Yn dilyn yr cytundeb cyllideb, mi sicrhaodd Plaid Cymru 4,001 er mwyn i'wch raddio rhwydwaith traws Cymru o fws i goetsch. Ac yn dilyn hynny, mi ddechreuodd y gwasanaeth newydd o abrystwyth i gaerdydd, wrth os dwythau, gan sicrhau siŵr na mwy pleseris a chyflymach. A mae hyn, wrth gwrs, yn gam pwysig ymlaen yn y broses o greu i gwasanaethau trefnidiaeth gyhoeddus ffit ar gyfer yr ugeinfed ganrif ar hugain uh, yn ein cymunedau gwledig ni. Felly, a wnaeth y llywodraeth ymrwymo i edrych i mewn i ehangu'r gwasanaeth yma, um, a chyni gwasanaethau coetsch fydda ar gael i bobl yn feddoleth i, fydda yn dymuno teithio ar fws, gyfforddus sy'r brif ddinas ac i rana eraill o Gymru. Well, doi beth, yn gynta, uh, yn un o'r cwestiwn a ydyn ni'n cynllunio i ehangu'r gwasanaeth, mae hynny yn iawn i yn gweithio gyda dod o'r lleol yn y bryd er mwyn edrych ar, uh, ar lwybre newydd, sef Bangor uh, i'r wain a chroes oswallt, uh, a hefyd uh, er enghraifft o'r Rexam i'r drenewydd. Now, of course, beth mae'n rhaid i'n ystyried i'w, am hafford y uh, dyr gwasanaeth yn ein cynllun cael i uh, I ddefnyddio ac, ac i redeg. Mae'n iawn i weld coetsch y mynd ar, ar y gwasanaeth rhwng Cydydd ac Aberystwyth, fel rwy'n sydd yn 
Well, then, he and Gavaro that Charles Cambria and the Demar and all at Hodge Othuna on Hodge here to back us, Govia. I think they're going to stop on about how I'm paid. I'm sorry, I'm going to go all one and go for this. So, Bethany, better in Syria, Nade, you am half or the three, you hang your Gwasanith. I would need am half or the three, you pen draw, of course. I think it's high board. A kerbadis in radio, radio Gwasanith and Carl E. E. Wesla draws up in the Nessa. Russell George. Uh, Joe Flyer, um, has the Welsh Government conducted a cost-benefit analysis of the Trans Cymru uh, service? And can I ask, how do uh, passenger numbers compare with other subsidised services? Uh, and can I ask what assessment you can make of the pilot on free weekend travel uh, bus uh, on the, on the Trans Cymru network? Yeah. There is an evaluation that is uh, taking place. What we do know, however, is the passenger numbers are growing. Uh, the introduction of free travel has been hugely important in terms of doing that. I have to say the member gives the impression, the way he asked the question, that he is not, not in favour of the uh, Trouse Cymru uh, network. Well, any network, uh, when it first begins, will take some time to bed in. Uh, we've never had a proper national bus network. Uh, even in the days of the Trouse Cambria, it was you know, they, they, Cardiff to Aberystwyth, then on to Bangor existed. After an hour's wait in Aberystwyth, those who were, then went on to uh, Bangor. But everything else was pretty short term and unsustainable. We intend to put in place a long term, sustainable network. We know there are communities now that are having a, a bus service for the first time in, in over 40 years. And that's something I'm sure that they will, uh, will welcome. So I'm happy with the way that the uh, Trouse Company network is performing, and of course the, uh, the passenger numbers in terms of the growth that we've seen. Question Scythe, Mike Hedges. Uh, George Lowers. Will the First Minister make a statement on the number of people in Wales with type 2 diabetes? Well, the National Diabetes Audit, which is part of the clinical audit programme for the NHS in Wales, indicates there were approximately 178,000 people registered with type 2 diabetes in Wales in the 2016 to 17 report. Well, can I thank the First Minister for that response? Uh, genes do play a part in, in type 2 diabetes, but lifestyle choice is also very important. You can, for example, have a genetic mutation that may, may, that may make you susceptible to type 2, but if you take good care of your body, you may not develop diabetes. Will the Welsh Government consider introducing a National Prevention Week for type 2 diabetes? Well, well, let me just, just give the, the, the member a flavour of what we're, what we're doing. Of course, we recognise the importance of prevention. We're aware of the NHS England programme. We don't think, though, this is right for Wales, because we know um, that obesity is a risk factor for a number of diseases. Therefore, a disease-specific approach is not warranted. We know also the evidence base for the effectiveness of a diabetes prevention programme is disputed. Uh, so, we do need to do something clearly, so a broader and multifaceted approach is required. We know that. So how will that be done? Well, the forthcoming obesity strategy will aim to put a strong focus upon prevention, and that will include exploring how we can scale messages across the population. I think a better way is to say how we can, how we can tell people, actually, rather than putting it that way, by working with a range of partners, including with health boards, through delivery of obesity pathways. Susie Davis, uh, Deal Clywydd. Um, First Minister, at the recent cross-party group on diabetes, we heard that uh, um, well, just about 100 new diabetes nurses are being introduced in, in England. Uh, we don't have any here, um, even though, of course, um, insulin pumps are given by the NHS uh, to people with uh, diabetes if they, if they need them urgently. But without the specialist nurses, there's no guarantee that they're being used correctly. Uh, bearing in mind that we get more m money per head uh, in Wales than in England, I wonder what uh, consideration has been given to introducing uh, diabetes nurses here. Obviously, we don't have to do, do exactly the same as England, but I would like to uh, get some reassurance from you that they've been considered. Well, uh, Diabetes Cymru, of course, are members of the Chief Medical Officer's Obesity Strategy uh, Group, so they are able, of course, to uh, inform government of what they think is the best way of dealing with uh, diabetes. I can say uh, that we do continue to invest record, record amounts in diabetes care. It was 76 million in 2009 to 10 to more than 111 million in 2016 to 17. Actually, it's been estimated that about 10% of NHS expenditure goes on treating uh, diabetes. And of course, uh, the way forward is outlined in our diabetes delivery uh, plan. That was updated and republished in, 20, in December of last year, and that'll take us through to 2020. Rina Piorwell. Uh, 
i'r bil um, i achub y hoed yn ddiweddar sy'n golygu bod strategaeth i daclo gordewdra yn cael ei datblygu ar hyn o bryd. Dwi'n anna ni'n angwybod bod gordewdra uh, yn uh, gallu ei arwain at diabetes math 2 a bod diabetes yn signo gymaint o gyllid gwasanaeth iechyd, gymaint ar 10 y cant o'r holl arian sy'n cael ei wario ar y gwasanaeth iechyd. Ydy chi fel prifwynedog yn cytuno uh, bod buddsoddi Symia sylweddol o arian mewn atal gordewdra er mwyn atal llawer o achosion o ddiabetes math 2. Hynny ydy llawer iawn mwy na sy'n cael ei buddsoddi ar hyn o bryd yn gwbl angen rheidiol er mwyn arbed arian i'r gwasanaeth iechyd yn yr hyd dymor. Well, it's only because of the fact that Dega can't be uh, aware of that or variant of our diabetes. And it's only because of gordewdra. Uh, a do ddim yn un sy'n siarad gyda unrhyw fath o brofiad yn un a, a hwn, wrth gwrs. Uh, yn rhywbeth sydd yn effeithio uh, uh, clefyd y siwgr, dyna pam, wrth gwrs, ni'n, ni'n datblygu uh, strategiaeth gordewdra cenedlaethol. Uh, ac, wrth gwrs, mae'r uh, gwasanaeth iechyd yn Nghymru gyda uh, sawl um, llwybr mewn lle yn barod, se, wrth gwrs, llwybr gordewdra er mwyn cefnogi bobl, er mwyn i leihau y rysg sydd y gyda nhw o, gyda nhw o, uh, o, o, o bethau fel uh, diabetes. Question to Andrew R. T. Davis. Uh, thank you, President Officer. Will the First Minister make a statement <coughs> on Welsh Government policy in respect of rural schools in South Wales Central? Well, we recently consulted on strengthening the school organisation code in respect of a presumption against the closure of rural schools. We've published our response in the summer. We've also introduced a new small and rural schools grant to encourage innovation and support greater school to school working. Thank you for that answer, First Minister. Uh, the formula that underpins funding of schools, in particular rural schools, is based on, uh, on the sparsity element of the census of 1991. On the special educational formula was last reviewed in 2006, and the primary and secondary school formula was last updated in 2003, First Minister. Uh, by any stretch of the imagination, those are dates that are long past. Do you think it is a sensible course of action for the government to undertake a review of, these, uh, for, of this funding formula uh, to bring it more up to date with current figures and current aspirations for the Welsh Government? Uh, that is something for uh, that needs to be explored, of course, with local education authorities uh, and something that will affect the uh, revenue support grant. Uh, experience tells that when a formula is changed, there are winners and losers. There's not a reason why it shouldn't change, of course, necessarily. Uh, but it is a matter for local authorities collectively to uh, decide on a common approach to in order to inform government. Jane Hutt. First Minister, I am concerned about the proposal by the Vale of Glamorgan Council to reconfigure primary provi school provision in the Western Vale, which would result in the closure of Clancarven Primary School. The school was deemed good in its last Estin inspection and falls within the yellow category. According to the Estin report, the buildings and site provide a stimulating and varied learning environment and pupils make good use of its wildlife and wooded areas. So, First Minister, with respect to this consultation procedure in the school organisation code relating to small and rural schools, I do believe that the impact of these proposals on the local rural community of Clancarven haven't been taken into account. Neither have the views of prospective parents who've contacted me and are devastated by these proposals. Can you assure me that the Welsh Government School Organisation Code will be respected in terms of importance of this school? Well, of course, local authorities, as the member will know, are responsible for the planning of school places, but in bringing forward proposals for substantial changes to schools, the local authorities and other proposers must comply with the School Organisation Code and must take into account a range of factors, the prime consideration being the interests of learners. The code does set a high standard for consultation, providing all those with an interest with an opportunity to make their views known and have those views taken into account. Question now, David Melding. Um, would the First Minister make a statement on the importance of Welsh cities to the development of the economy? Well, our Prosperity for All strategy and the Economic Action Plan does set out our actions to, for all parts of Wales to contribute to and benefit from economic growth. That obviously includes enabling our cities and large towns to be engines of growth that benefit their wider region. Uh, First Minister, I agree with uh, what you've hinted at there, that our uh, cities are a great resource <coughs> with regional and national uh, responsibilities. But as you will know, under the Planning Act, no regional planning schemes have yet uh, come forward on a voluntary basis. I'm glad that you're going to consult on this and whether 
uh, we need to take firmer action. I wonder if you could give an indication of the government's thinking. Well, our thinking is that local authorities need to collaborate more in order to produce uh, regional development plans. If that doesn't happen, then we will have to consider what, step, what steps, of course, to take next. Uh, but we'd encourage local authorities to do so. I mean, he, the reality is, of course, that political boundaries are completely uh, ineffective uh, when it comes to, to, to the, the way in which the economy works. Uh, the reality is that the economies of many uh, local authorities are, are in, intertwined inextricably with, with Cardiff. I mean, I live 20 miles away from Cardiff, but I know that many, many, many people commute to Cardiff uh, every day to, uh, to work, and it acts, uh, even though Virginia has its own economy and its own employers, Cardiff still is an important source of work. Uh, and I do think we do uh, our public a disservice uh, if local authorities simply see planning and the availability of housing purely as something that exists within their own boundaries. Uh, so it is important that local authorities work together. If they don't do that, then clearly we will we'll have to take steps to make the planning system more effective. I can all our question. Dig, Julie Morgan. How does the Welsh Government ensure that all children in Wales have an equal chance in life? Well, our aim in Prosperity for All is to support children and young people to make the most of their potential. And that means uh, providing them with the best start in life and the support they need and the opportunities they need to grow and achieve uh, to the best of, uh, of their ability and, of course, in terms of the um, skills that they have. Um, I thank the First Minister for that response. Um, does the First Minister agree that um, all children deserve to be able to particip participate equally in after-school activities? and that these often come at a cost, uh, particularly to poorer families, when you need specialist um, uh, equipment and um, specialist kits for sporting activities, for example. Um, what can the uh, government do to give those children an equal chance in life? Well, it's hugely important that we are as flexible as possible in providing support to those who need it the most. And the Education Secretary is in the process of looking to introduce an improved grant that suits families' needs better than the, the current school uniform grant, something which supports better access to curriculum activities and learning opportunities that might otherwise be denied to learners due to cost. So it's a question of expanding and being more flexible uh, in terms of what has previously uh, been in place to make sure uh, the children don't lose out.